Hey everybody, it's Party Lead, and today we're taking a look at some absolute gems from 2022 that you may have missed for one reason or another. Maybe they released alongside a bunch of other titles, maybe they didn't have big marketing budgets, or maybe they just somehow slipped under your radar. Whatever the case might be, these are some excellent titles from the year that you should absolutely go back and check in on if you haven't already. If there are some games from 2022 you'd recommend people check out, don't hesitate to drop a comment down below, and if you'd like to stay on top of strategy, sim, management, and RPG type games, you might want to consider subscribing to the channel if you enjoy this video. Now, without further ado, and with timestamps down below, let's begin. King Arthur Knight's Tale is a very interesting take on Arthurian legend where you play as Mordred brought back to life, tasked with killing King Arthur who has, for reasons unknown, gone evil. In order to pull off this kill, you'll need to pull together a band of supposed heroes and lead them through a variety of circumstances and settings, equipping them and upgrading their skills appropriately to wield them in combat and overcome all manner of fantastical enemy with great creature design, both aesthetically and mechanically speaking. Beyond participating in turn-based tactical battles, the strategic layer will have you managing Camelot as well, building it back up to provide you with the resources you'll need to make progress through the campaign, including structures needed to improve and heal the so-called heroes of your own dark version of the round table. What's more, these heroes can actually die if you don't look after them in battle, and they'll each bring their own personalities, traits, and goals, and they'll each also have their own degree of loyalty to you and your cause. Where you sit on the moral compass will influence how your entourage feels about you, and it'll also have a direct impact on how the narrative plays out and what kinds of decisions you'll be able to make, as well as the kinds of skills you'll have access to. The moral compass here is very involved, and it impacts your game more than I've typically seen, resulting in a decent bit of replayability. You'll hand out court titles and pass decrees and laws, you'll train up your aspirant heroes to get them worthy of your round table, and you'll engage in some rather interesting battles in a variety of interesting spaces with great atmosphere and enemy types alike. There's a ton of depth and variety to enjoy in the game, and I think it went under many people's radars, doing it a great disservice. If you haven't had a chance to check out King Arthur Knight's Tale, now is as good a time as any to pick it up and take it for a spin. Nebulous Fleet Command is a game you may have heard mentioned on this channel a few times now, and if you're a fan of hard sci-fi, space battles, realistic military technology, and strategy and tactics games where your intellect matters over how quickly you can click, this is one you absolutely must check out. I won't sugarcoat it. The game is complex, and in some ways, yes, intimidating, but even in its current early access state, it boasts a solid tutorial to get you acclimated to its concepts and a great AI to practice fighting against until you're ready to go toe-to-toe -to -toe against your friends. Though the full game will eventually include a narrative-driven campaign, the core gameplay loop at present is focused around designing your fleets and taking them into battle. Fleet designs are limited through the use of a point-cost system, but you have a choice of different ship classes with different numbers and sizes of slots where you'll install all manner of systems and their redundancies to keep each ship running when parts get damaged to the point of needing repairs mid-battle or to the point that they can't be repaired. You'll place reactors to generate power, you'll place railguns, missile bays, and solid projectile turrets to attack the enemy, you'll place point defense weapons to defend yourself against incoming salvos, and you'll place all manner of electronic warfare equipment as well to help find the enemy or to mask yourself from their scanners and radars. The level of nuance is immense, and a relatively recent update even allows you to customize the actual missiles that sit in your missile bays, adjusting their guidance systems, their flight time, their speed, and much more besides. But that's just me talking about fleet design. When combat actually begins, you're working around six degrees of freedom as you move freely in three-dimensional space, adjusting rotation, yaw, spin, locking them in place, or otherwise flipping around to present a smaller profile for the enemy to hit, perhaps where less important components are exposed to incoming fire, while also ensuring your own weapons are able to fire at targets. You'll deal with inertia and how things in space don't suddenly stop and turn on a dime not even the missiles you fire. You'll deal with turning ship systems off and on to control how easily the enemy can spot you, and you'll deal with visual and beyond visual range tactics as you send smaller profile scout ships to paint targets for otherwise blindly fired missiles. Nebulous Fleet Command does such a great job of taking today's real-world military technology and concepts and extending them into the sci-fi space, making every maneuver, every hit, every tactic feel that much more real, believable, and immersive. This is the closest a game has come to making me feel like I was in control of actual ships, and I felt as though I was watching those epic battles from The Expanse play out. 
If any of that piques your interest, again, I can highly and passionately recommend checking Nebulous Fleet Command out. Feel free to join our Discord linked in the description down below if you're looking for people to play with, or you can join the Developers Discord to seek out multiplayer buddies too. Or, as I said earlier, just play against the AI that'll put up quite a fight, especially as you're familiarizing yourself with this absolute gem from early 2022. Warhammer 40k Chaos Gate Demon Hunters is a mouthful of a title, but I will say it over and over and over again if it means recommending this excellent turn-based tactics game set in the Warhammer 40k universe. Unlike most games under the license, Demon Hunters is a fantastic experience not just for fans of the universe, but newcomers too, doing an excellent job of exploring the narrative and mechanics in ways that welcome people into the grim dark world set in the distant future, pitting your super soldier space marines against demons, their cultists, and more. At a strategic level, you'll be moving your ship from planet to planet, fending off a growing plague as it strikes at multiple locations at the same time, limiting what you can successfully respond to with escalating circumstances as things go on. You'll research additional ways to empower your space marines while also learning about the enemy, and you'll spend time upgrading your ship so it can move faster, strike harder, and all round do more as far as wounded or downed space marines are concerned, defending itself in space and more concepts besides. Your Space Marines can all be leveled up as they gain experience as well, gaining access to additional actions, more weapon proficiencies, and passive and active abilities alike. You'll be able to customize how said Marines look, making each stand out as you acquire more and more for the task at hand, and you'll be able to customize their gear based on their class, and limited by what you've been able to requisition from your chapter's headquarters, a very clever way to control the rate at which you become more powerful, while also inviting you to make decisions with regards to what category of requisition you want to prioritize. When it comes to the turn-based tactical side of things, you'll see a lot of familiar aspects if you're a fan of the genre, though they've been tweaked in ways that align with a more violent and aggressive setting. For example, how Overwatch doesn't just apply against the first enemy to trigger it, but as many as you have spare action points left over for. Or how there are some abilities that cause your Space Marines to add supporting fire against a target for free, adding to the level of damage output if you've set things up accordingly. Action points are shared between movement, attacks, and ability use alike, including overwatch, grenade tossing, and the sort, and as you move from cover to cover, seek angles to attack the enemy, and unleash flurries of bullets, flames, and melee attacks alike, you'll be in a constant race against time, with the plague evolving the situation constantly, at times quite literally. Some enemies will evolve mid-battle, blessed by demonic entities as they are, and so you'll need to plan your assaults with those repercussions in mind. Otherwise, you can tap into special abilities that further aggravate the demons while giving you advantages in desperate situations as well. From critical hits to the ability to use the environment as a weapon, Warhammer 40k Chaos Gate Demon Hunters is quite possibly the single greatest Warhammer 40k game in recent years, and what's more, it's quite possibly one of the best turn-based tactics game that came out in 2022. It has the perfect atmosphere, a great amount of tension, and a lot more to explore than first meets the eye. If you're a fan of the genre but don't care about the Warhammer 40k universe, do yourself a favor and give this one a shot if that association first made you look the other way. It's honestly just that good. If you're a fan of the setting, this one is a must play. Either way, you should try Warhammer 40k Chaos Gate Demon Hunters. Clan Folk takes a fresh angle on the colony management game, not only eschewing violence and combat completely, but also focusing on the concept of managing a small family through multiple generations. You play as a clan in the Scottish Highlands, and you can choose one of the pre-generated families, complete with animal companions to provide resources in the early days, or you can build your own multi-generational family consisting of grandparents, parents, and their children. Each member will have a slew of needs and wants modified by a variety of aspects from the current weather to if they've crapped their pants, and each member will also have a variety of skills that make them more or less capable of doing anything from cutting down trees to growing crops to butchering meat and more. As characters age, they'll become more skilled based on what they've spent their time working on, but beyond that, as each of your colony members perform various tasks, they'll generate new ideas for you to implement. Ideas being how the massive tech tree actually progresses through new materials and end products alike. It's an elegant system that encourages exploration, though at the same time, you want to navigate your way through the process wisely as you prepare for changing seasons and the harsh reality of Highland living. The seasons determine temperatures and the kinds of clothes you'll want to have on hand, as well as the heat sources you're able to build and keep fueled. Beyond that, though, you'll concern yourself with what's available and when, 
Rabbits are plentiful in spring, and mushrooms grow in many places during the fall, but come winter, the land is barren, and you'll have to hope and pray you stockpiled enough and don't have to tell your family members to starve themselves. You'll manage sleep cycles, you'll build barns and coops, and you look to supply for the needs of your animals and humans alike as you grow your homestead and eventually start to explore options like trade with other clans who might have access to resources you don't, willing to sell them to you or barter with you as long as you've maintained good relations through prior trades. You'll be able to hire traveling laborers to help with particularly large projects and you'll also be able to establish an inn, complete with a rating system where the guests share their opinions based on the quality of provided accommodations and meals. And all this is happening as your family lives its life. The elderly grow feeble and eventually die, or disease and hunger might take a life or two as well, but otherwise, life must go on. Children grow older, have children of their own, see their grandchildren start to grow before time takes them away as it does all. Generation upon generation of progress, fighting against the harshness of the world, looking to make a family home worth passing down. Clanfolk has some very interesting ideas that set it aside from other games that look similar at first glance, and what Clanfolk does is very, very compelling in my opinion. I definitely recommend checking it out if you're into colony management games. Road Warden is a text-based RPG that will certainly feel nostalgic for many and fresh for others. A simple art style, a simple UI, and a simple objective all come together to create a very compelling narrative that has you playing as the Road Warden on this otherwise unnamed peninsula where fantastical beasts of all manner roam alongside bandits, merchants, and soldiers alike. You'll engage in conversations with a multitude of people using an interesting system that lets you choose your tone as you speak, and you'll spend much time looking after your core needs – nourishment, health, sleep, hygiene, and armor – and you'll do it all while on a strict time limit within which to reach your goal. You'll buy items to use on your journey, you'll take notes to make sure you're headed in the right direction, and you'll occasionally find yourself in troubling circumstances that you can't just talk your way out of. Character archetypes are determined through the opening decisions you make, and your choice of education and armament alike will determine how things play out, opening things up to a bit of replayability in this story-rich experience. Road Warden is a very different kind of game, especially in today's day and age, but everything it does different, it does well. The world is immersive, tropes are few and very far between, the sound design is impeccable, character interactions are believable, my goodness, Road Warden is such a gem, and I fear many people hesitate to pick it up because of how simple it looks at first glance. It takes a minute to grow on you when you first sit with the game, but as consequences start to stack up and as your decisions start to pay dividends or exact their toll, you'll quickly realize that every move you make, every inventory item you acquire or use, and every moment of time spent is crucial to your success. But with a game so exquisite, even with failure comes joy. If you like RPGs and immersive atmospheres, you should absolutely check out Road Warden. Ixion released right at the end of the year, and if I had more time with the game before 2023 came rushing at us, it might even have featured as one of my top 5 games of the year. Quickly described as Frostpunk in space, Ixion has you in charge of a space station that's been sent out to find a new home for humanity after living conditions on Earth have reached the point of no return. You're responsible for managing a slew of resources acquired through mining and processing, and you're responsible for the overall happiness of the people on the station, as well as stability and working conditions across each of its sectors. Managing the flow of resources between the sectors is equally important, as is the overall level of trust that the people on board the station have, and as you explore the extremely compelling and harrowing narrative, you'll find yourself engaging with a variety of events and moral dilemmas on and off the station alike. Ixion will have you researching technology to make life sustainable on the station as you seek out this new home for humanity, and it'll have you struggling to maintain optimal layouts as it throws emergencies and fresh struggles your way constantly. There are moments of respite, to be sure, but by and large, there's a relatively constant level of challenge the game lays out in front of you. Though I haven't yet finished my run of the game, you can watch it unfold on the channel, and you can see that I've been enjoying every moment of it. The writing is excellent, it's visually top-notch, the sound design is extremely immersive, the music is beautiful, and the overall narrative experience so far has been excellent. A lot of the criticism for the game seems to come from how challenging it's been, and while I can absolutely respect that the game should probably, yes, have difficulty sliders, I do think the challenge is a part of the appeal. Coming close to failing but just skirting by, or heck, even failing and having to start a chapter over is, in my opinion, 
part of the fun with a game like this. Fail fast, try again, win. If that sounds like your cup of tea, Ixion is a must play in my humble opinion. And if you'd rather have a more forgiving ride, I'd recommend adding this beauty to your wish list so that when the developers implement their planned update in response to the feedback about difficulty sliders, you'll get a notification and you'll know it's time to dive into this late contender for one of my top games of the year. Now, if you're curious about what my top games of the year actually were, don't hesitate to check out the link in the description and pinned comment down below. And if you have any games that you think went underappreciated this year, let me know in the comments. I'm always on the lookout for more, and it's great to see what others are enjoying out there. If you'd like to keep up to date with strategy, tactics, sim, and management type games, again, don't hesitate to subscribe to the channel. And as always, a massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. Y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time, cheers.